So as a facility investigator, you're assigned a case after it's reached our hotline. Um, it's then assigned to an investigator. Um, at that time, it's given a priority. So our investigators have to see um, our clients within a certain time frame. At that time, that's when the investigation starts. Well, we investigate cases of abuse and neglect um, that we um, get routed to our office uh, by our hotline. And we investigate cases at state facilities such as the state hospital, state support living center, and they can run the gamut from physical abuse to neglect. Um, we take statements, we gather evidence, we take pictures. Um, we're obtaining interviews, face-to-face -face interviews. Um, we're gathering video surveillance, documentary evidence. The main focus is to objectively gather as much information as you possibly can um, and uh, come to some type of determination um, with reference to if the allegation is valid or not valid. And that may not be the end because we then have to defend that report. Um, there's a series of things that can happen after our report um, is completed. The facilities have the opportunity to appeal our findings or we may have to attend a court hearing over our report. There's never a dull moment. It's never boring in this field. So there's always a challenge. Um, each case is different. Each allegation is different. Um, it's like a puzzle. Um, so you have to approach it differently each and every time. We have to ask some really hard questions sometimes, sometimes very direct questions about death or sexual abuse. Um, and they're not easy to ask sometimes when they're maybe an older person and you know we've always been raised to respect elder people. Um, but you have to ask the questions and um, you have to dig deep sometimes. Not a lot of people realize, but in facility investigations, we're dealing with a very vulnerable population. Um, our clients either having mental illness or an intellectual developmental disability. So that alone, you know, we're dealing with a lot of sensitive and graphic information, so we have to be empathetic. And on top of that, we have the time frames, um, so we need somebody who is reliable, somebody who has a sense of immediacy, because every day counts. This job may require overtime. Um, we work weekends and we may work holidays. If a case is due on a weekend or a holiday, depending on what type of facility it is, the case is due on that day and you and your supervisor will work on a holiday or after hours, um, we're also on call. So we can't predict what's gonna happen on call. You may have already worked your 40 hours throughout the week, but if it's the weekend, you have to see a client, we have no choice, we have to go out. There can be days where it's feast or famine. You maybe only have like a case or two on your workload and you've, you've got it all shored up and you know, you actually have a little time on your hands. And then there's times where the flood comes and you will have a lot of cases and you feel like there's not enough time in the day and you're gonna have to put in a little extra time and you're not gonna be clocking out at five. We conform to our facility schedules. A lot of it is shift work. So they may have to work 7 to 3, 3 to 11, 11 to 7. It depends what time the incident occurred. It's not the regular grind, the 9 to 5. You have to be flexible and independent, um, work with not a lot of supervision, and those are things that appeal to me. Um, I manage my time, I manage my caseload, um, and you're definitely not chained to a desk, so that's, <laughs> that's definitely a, a plus. So. This job is not for the faint of heart. You will be going into facilities. I mean, and you're dealing with people, like I said, that are at their worst, bless their heart. They're having mental breakdowns. The hygiene might not be great. You gotta walk through the day room and there'll be 30 patients there. There's a danger level to it too. I mean, there's ways to protect yourself, but you're dealing with people that may, for lack of better words, come unhinged. And, you know, I've been pushed and, you run that risk. It's an occupational hazard. In facility investigations, the stress comes a lot of times from the deadlines. We have to turn our investigations in most times every two weeks. Um, they're 14 day deadlines. Um, some facilities require 10 day deadlines. And some facilities require a five day report, just kind of where are you at? What, what's the status of the case? 
So with all those things, and plus you have to think about policy timeframes, you have a certain amount of time to make contact with your client. Um, depending on the priority of the case, you have 24 hours, three days, or a week. So um, you're constantly, and if you're getting a case every other day or every three days, you're going to be rearranging your schedule throughout the week. That's the X factor right there. You can never control how many cases are going to come in. You can logistically, through your supervisor and how they route and all that other stuff, you try to get a handle on it, but you never know how many cases are going to come in. And that's where you have to be flexible. You just have to roll with it. And it's important that you work in a team environment because other caseworkers support each other. There have been some times where I think something happened. There was definitely an incident of abuse, but I can't prove it. This is very emotional. You know, a lot of our investigators may not find the truth. So it's frustrating to them, but because we've all been there and we all know what they're going through, it's a little bit easier for us to talk, um, for investigators to talk to their supervisors, to their peers. Um, we may ask them if they need to take some time off, you know, if the case is that serious. It affects us. It does affect us emotionally in sometimes a negative manner, sometimes positive. Um, negatively because you think of, I'm sorry, um, your own mortality and your own um, life situations in which people have died. Um, think about my own personal situation. Dad died eight months ago and he was surrounded by his family. Quiet room, the way it should have been this particular client, he died underneath somebody who was trained to take care of him and did it incorrectly. So um, it can affect us in a lot of ways. Um, and again, I, but I think it'll be a more positive experience for me once I'm able to put a nail in the coffin, as it were, for these staff members who didn't carry out their job duties the way they should have been. And as a result, a life was lost. So, but again, I also think to the future that that's not going to happen again at that facility because they're going to think twice before they restrain a client. So it's good, um, but it's bad and it's, it's a lot of emotions, but it, it's a good and rewarding feeling at the end of the day. We're looking for somebody who is empathetic compassionate with the population that we serve. We're looking for flexibility, um, somebody who's self-motivated, somebody who has that critical thought um, organized, somebody who can prioritize. I think qualities necessary to be a good um, APS investigator would be um, integrity. We work without someone watching over us every day. So you have to be honest with yourself and in your everyday dealings. Um, you have to be, you have to have good work ethic. And you need to be empathetic with the people that you're dealing with. They're, they're at probably the lowest point in their life. They're dealing with extreme emotional trauma or mental health issues. And um, you have to be patient and kind. Before taking this job, um, one should consider, do they have the emotional ability to work with the population that we serve? Um, it's very tough communicating and seeing the state that some of these clients are in. And it will test you. It will test you to say, okay, is this what you really want to do? Are you ready? Because you will be tested in that way. So you have to make sure that this is important to you and this is what you want to do. I do this job, I really like it. I enjoy putting the puzzle together. I enjoy analyzing everything once it's come together. Um, once you've gathered all the, the relevant documentation, once you've talked to all the relevant people and seeing the case for what it really is. Sometimes you have a case where you just can't put your finger on what's going on. Um, but that's what keeps you going. You kind of, you keep wanting to know. You And for me, I'm always learning. There's never a dull moment in this job. Um, we are 
constantly meeting a lot of new people. We're interacting with a lot of different people from different backgrounds. So we're learning a lot. Um, you know, we're traveling. We travel a lot. I don't see the inside of my office, but maybe once or twice a week, which is fun. And um, I enjoy that a lot because I'm, again, not tied to a chair, not tied to my desk. Um, although you never know what you're gonna get, that's what people enjoy because you get to plan your day. Um, you know, do you wanna sleep in? Do you wanna stop and grab a cup of coffee? You know, there's minimal supervision, so people like the flexibility in this job. It's fun, it's different. It's not your typical nine to five job, and that's what makes it the best job I've ever had. I get a lot of satisfaction uh, out of the type of work I do, out of assisting clients. Um, even though I don't do direct service, such as like a social work or case planning type deal, mine is strictly investigation. But you do feel a sense um, of advocacy. A lot of our clients can't protect themselves. A lot of our clients are non-communicative. So we are that voice for them. And this job is very stressful. But when you go home, you know that you've closed the case. You've come, you found the truth. Um, that alone makes you feel good. And it makes you forget about those stressful days or those stressful times that you've had.